Ezekiel 38, the Battle of Gog, people are teaching this wrong. Why? They forget about the full context when they're forced to read verse by verse. Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, which Rosh is head of, Meshech and Tubal, which is modern day Turkey. Prophecy and say against him, and thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, will, I am against you, O Gog, prince head of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaw. We know that God is sovereign and everything is to his glory. Lead you out with all your army, horse, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed with great company. So he's going to have an army. But who is this army? Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, which is part of Turkey, the Armenia, I would say through the Armenian side, and Togomora too, far north, and all its troops. If anybody don't know about the Turkish people, this is what it is talking about, the land of the Turks. Now we are going to see that after many days you will be visited in the latter years, the end of the days. Daniel, all of them touch on the latter years. You will ascend coming like a storm covering the land like a cloud. We all know that history passed and when somebody has come onto the land to invade Israel, it's like a storm covering land, right? <clears throat> you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a place of peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars or gates to take plunder, to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations. Verse 13, Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish. This is Saudi Arabia, your harlot. Why this is the Antichrist? Because we see restoration, we see a triumphant festival, and the land of Israel restored. So that the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their God, from that day forward. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore I hid my face from them, I gave them into the hand of their enemies. Obadiah, Zechariah, Isaiah, Joel, Amos, Habakkuk, they've all talked about this. Now listen, when I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and I am hollowed in the, them in the sight of many nations, so he's making himself known to many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who sent them into ca ca captivity among the nations, but also brought them back to their land and, le and left none of them captive any longer. And I will not hide my face from them any more, for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel. We are going to go to Joe 3. This is very important. A lot of people don't want to look at this because they're forced to look at the full context. For behold, in those days and at that time, I will bring the captives of Judea and Jerusalem, Ephraim and Judah. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. On account of my people, my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nation. Verse 3, I have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coast of Philistia. Philistia. People don't want to hear this. Verse 10, beat your plowshares, plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come together, all you nations, and gather together all around. Let the nations be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the battle of Armageddon. For there I was set to judge all the surrounding nations. Verse 14, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will grow dark, and the suns will diminish their brightness. 
what does this say? The Lord will also roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and earth will shake. It's time to stay in context, guys. Let's go to Zechariah. We're going to go to Zechariah 14. This is going to make people so mad. The day of the Lord. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Verse 2, For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses raffled, and the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Verse 3, As he fights in the day of battle, and in the day of his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, and while face, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two, from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north, and half of it towards the south. Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azel. Funny, I've, I've seen this before. Now let's look, scripture for scripture. Revelation 12. When we're forced to read the full context, guys, it throws a hole in people's theology. The woman persecuted, Revelation 12. Now when the woman saw that he had been, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time, a time, and a half a time. Now, I want to go to Daniel 8. This needs to get talked about because a lot of these preterists and a lot of these theologians and teachers don't want to acknowledge this. Daniel 8, verse 3. Then I lifted up my eyes, and, and there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns. So one horn was higher than the other one. One was a deformed. But one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. So this is the end of days. So we're going to, we know that Daniel one. Daniel 8, 1 through 8 is history, Alexander the Great. But we are going to look in 9 down. And out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land, and grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground. This is when the Antichrist arises, and he causes some of the host of heaven, remember when Satan gets cast down, context guys now listen <clears throat> verses 19 and then I said look I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation the but end of days for at the appointed time the end shall be this is serious guys the ram which you saw having two horns are they are the kings of Media and Persia and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece this is a placement word it is actually Yavon Turkey. So this is Asia Minor again. Let's go to Daniel 10, where we are forced to look in the context of Scripture. Prophecies concerning Persia and Greece. Again, staying within the flow of Scripture. Daniel, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, because he humbled, he fasted, and he prayed, to humble yourself before your God, and your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, again showing a deity, for some people don't want to acknowledge this. That there is evil going on in this, these countries time and time again listen but the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me 21 days and behold michael one of the chief prince came to me came to help me for i had been left alone there was the kings of persia now i've come to make known to you what will happen to your people in the latter days for the vision refers to many days yet to come people don't want to be forced to read this man let's go to Daniel 7 
the vision of the four beasts, like a bear, like a lion, like a leopard. We just went over that. That is the kingdom of Yavon, Persia, and Turkey. Now let's go to Revelation Thirteen. The beast which you saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. So, again, we are going to f look at these kingdoms. <clears throat> so that way... We can stop saying Rome. We can stop saying Jerusalem. Because again, within the context of Scripture, he's judging all the surrounding nations. Gabriel is making known to him that there's principalities over this. Now, if you guys want to see more of this, I plan to dive more into this. I need to create slides in my presentation. I just want to give you a little glimpse of what I was working on.